And hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cyrus Webb Presents. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. This is a very special episode of Cyrus Webb Presents because we are everywhere except for one place. And I'm not going to tell you what that one place is, but that one place not being there today is going to allow us to have a lot of freedom and fun with our next guest. I want to welcome you guys who are jo joining us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, YouTube, X and on Instagram. Glad you all could be with us. Bookworm, I see you over there on the IG side. Glad you could be able to join us there. Also, I see you guys coming in over on YouTube as well. I appreciate you guys being with us. We have best-selling author Iris Bolin in the house today. She's going to talk to us about already a very busy 2024 for her, but also a brand new announcement in addition to her book family, something that a lot of you guys are going to really appreciate, especially if you are an audiobook lover. Iris, thank you so much for being back on with us. Really appreciate it. Well, Cyrus, thank you. And it is great to see you again. And we're going to behave ourselves and stay on time. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, I don't know if she was warning me or that. <laughs> she was speaking life into that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Well, look, I, I really appreciate you, Iris. A lot of great things happening for you right now. Only Champion, good to be able to see you as well over on the IG side as well. Um, I love the fact technology allows us to be able to bring all these different audiences together, uh, yeah. Iris. And that's a great way for us to start. You've been able to have such a storied career that continues on. Everything from best-selling books to a television series to producing films. Talk to us about this experience and what it's been like for you to take the words and the stories and the characters and to share them with the world. It's actually been wonderful. And it's, it's really because of the readers, because the readers mm -hmm. love, it, love it so much. They wanted it on different type of platforms. So, you know, when you write a story and your readers really get into your characters, in fact, they kind of make the characters a part of their family. You know, they want to see more of them and they want to see them on, in, in many different ways. And that's how it led to the TV series for the Heart series. And uh, we actually what, we did season one and season two on there. And we were very, very fortunate um, to have some great people to join us um, in, those, in those productions. So they did well. And then, of course, you know, I have a love for, for reading myself and Beverly Jenkins was one of my favorites um, to, to read, to go to, to read. And when we talked and she said, okay, I want you to do um, one of my books into <laughs> a movie. I was like, yes, mm. yes, because I love the story. And yeah. um, I got to write the script and we got to produce a movie. You know, her book, into, her book, Daily Sexy, into mm -hmm. a full length movie. So it wasn't just bringing my words to life or to the screen. It was also bringing another author who I love and admire's words to the screen as well. So it's been very rewarding, not just for um, my readers before me as, a, as an author to even be able to, to go out and do something for someone that I love and admire too. Right, so exactly. Yeah, and I was just going to say, Iris, um, you know, it, you sharing that story, I mean, it says so much uh, also about how you're seen in this industry and not just industry as an author, but also as someone who brings such commitment and excellence to what you do. Your work really does speak for itself. So, it, you know, when you have someone like a Beverly Jenkins who is so well respected, you mm -hmm. know, to come to you and say, hey, I want you to do this. I, it really is no surprise because the work has really, really spoken for itself. What has it been like for you to reflect on the work? Because it has been a journey for you, Iris, one that you've been able to to do and to really share with the rest of us. What has that journey been like for you to reflect on? Really, um, looking back, first of all, you don't believe it's you um, that's doing it. <laughs> you don't believe it's you. I, I, I don't believe that's, that's me that's doing it, but it, it is me because they have my name on it. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been um, very rewarding. And I think the great thing about it, Cyrus, is when I go out there and I try to do something, I try to put my all into it. And I hope it reflects in the final product, you know, when I finish doing it. Because when we did the TV series, I didn't know anything about filming Cyrus or casting or 
editing or any any of those things, but we went out there and I surrounded myself with really, really good people who were knowledgeable in that area. And they were kind enough to teach me. So mm -hmm. for me, looking back on the products that we put together, I know it's not just me, even though it's my name on it. I know it's those people that came in and, and helped me and taught me um, how to do these different things. So I reflect back on it. I look at these movies. I read my stories. Now I'm listening to my stories and I'm like, wow, that's me, but I still got to clean my house. <laughs> Love that. And and you've been able to, I mean, and this is why I, I love doing segments like this, Iris, because you, I'm so glad you're getting your flowers and you continue to get your flowers and you're able to see the impact that you're able to make. Because whether we're talking about some of the actors you've worked with, right, new and seasoned, right, yeah. some of the opportunities you've opened up for, you know, for actors and for people to work on these projects. It, you really have built this community around you, not only of passionate, creative individuals, but also those who, you know, have not only benefited from your commitment to your craft, but also been able to help share that. Talk to us about that experience, because when you kind of reflect on that, like with the Heart series, how you were able to, I mean, I have to say the majority of that cast, you know, a lot of us did not know who they were before, <laughs> yeah. you know, before you. But now, of course, we look for them for other projects. What has that been like for you? Oh, that that's a wonderful feeling. You know, when we started um, filming, one of the things that I wanted to do would give, was give first-time um, people an opportunity, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. And a lot of the actors and actresses that was in the Heart series, that was like their first, their first movie, their first TV series mm -hmm. um, that, they had, that they had to do. And a lot of people that work behind the cameras as well, you know, that was their first time um, filming, production, doing lightings and things of that nature. So for me, it was it was opening up doors of opportunities for those people as well. And I'm so happy that they were able to take those opportunities and, and look at them now. You know, I, I sit back and I, I look, oh, look, that's, that's so and so on TV and oh, well, they, and I have to follow them and they have to support what they're doing. So it was a wonderful, wonderful um, opportunity to open doors for them. And now I get back to see, I get to sit back and see how the opening those doors has helped someone else along the way. And that's the whole idea behind it is to, it's not just me doing my thing, but being able to open doors so that other people can do their thing as well. So I love being able to sit back and see it happening for them. Love that. Uh, Miss Miss Magnolia Reed's going to be able to see you over on the Facebook side. I want to say again, for those who are just tuning in, welcome. We are simulcasting today on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, X, and Instagram with the one and only Iris Bowling. She's a best-selling author of a lot of books, but we're talking with her right now. We're kind of setting the stage right now, talking about her amazing career success, how she's been able to take her books, of course, be able to share them with, with readers, and then, of course, to have like the Heart series turn into a television series. And now she's celebrating something really big this year, which is great for those who do a lot of traveling, do a lot of listening to their books, and that is being able to celebrate some of her books already being released as audiobooks. So before we let our audience know which books are available and how they can start listening to them, Iris, how did this new chapter, pun intended there, how did that start when it comes to the audiobooks? Well, you know, uh, someone from, um, and, and I hope this is this is fine to mention, because I want to give them their props. Mm -hmm. Someone from Tandor Media contacted me, and um, and and they were interested in doing the last uh, wedding book series in, in audiobooks. And I want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to go out there and, and and start getting some of my stories into audiobooks. Because you know, Cyrus, a few years back, I did um, an audiobook myself. I did um, The Pendleton Rule. In case you haven't noticed, I do a lot of things myself. I go out here and I would try something <laughs> and see, see if it works. And if it works, great. If not, we'll try it again and fix mm -hmm. it. But um, a few years back, I did my own audio book, but it does take a lot of time 
um, and finding the right talent. And then you have to produce that book. So while during that time, believe it or not, I was filming the Heart series. I was producing the audio book, The Pimpleton Room, and I was still writing all at the same time. It was crazy. You know, so it takes a lot of time to do it. So I haven't been able to get back into doing any of my books into audio myself. So when they reached out and they gave me an opportunity, I was so touched. Number one, I was touched because they wanted my work. Um, yeah. And number two, it was it gave me the opportunity to get some more books out there on another platform that I hadn't been able to really get back to. And, and that's how it all really came about. And when they contacted me and they said they wanted this particular um, um, series of books, I said, yes. And at the time, it was only three that was out there. And I told them, well, there's a fourth one coming. They said, well, let's add the fourth one in there, too. And, and they did. And that is how we got to open up this new platform to a whole nother group of readers and share my stories with them. Yeah. Uh, we're going to let our audience know how they can enjoy it and on whatever platform they listen to their books here, Iris in a moment. But I want to kind of reflect on something that you've seen, uh, even more so than myself and some of our audience, and that is the evolution that we've gone through when it comes to how we're able to enjoy our favorite authors, right? You know, before, you know, it was only the hardcover. That's what we had, you know, either paperback or hardcover. Uh, and then, of course, there was, you know, the the whole thing with electronic books, the e-reader, uh, the Kindles. Um, and I can remember, because I was one of these people, Iris, who I was not very welcoming of the Kindle when it first came out. Uh, and, and I had actually, it's so funny, I'm actually on tape talking about that, that mm -hmm. I was uncomfortable uh, with it. Uh, as a reader, because I like to be able to travel with book, yeah. you know, with my books. Yeah. However, when my traveling schedule picked up, <laughs> you know, you appreciated it. Yeah, carrying around ten books is not. <laughs> so then I have I was able to pivot in my thinking and say, you know what, that e-reader thing may be a good idea <laughs> after a while. And so now that's become a part of our lives. I, you know, my best friend who who commutes an hour to and from work he loves audiobooks and that's the way he's able to enjoy his books so i bring all that up to say what has it been like for you to be kind of a part of that each one of those chapters that we've gone through when it comes to how readers are able to now enjoy your work no well first first thing i want to say is i am i am that paper i, I like that book in mm -hmm. my hand whether it's hard copy or paperback you know i like that book in my hand i like flipping the pages it's just mm -hmm something about that yeah. so i still i still do paperback hardback and all of that however like you said um traveling with 10 or 20 books at one time is not a good way to go you know but then i started with i didn't start with the kindle i started with a sony reader if you can re mm. remember that i started with a sony reader and i said yeah. well okay this this is not too bad especially if you're on the plane or or, mm -hmm. or something like that you don't have to worry about carrying heavy load you can just carry that one reader with you and have access to all of your stories at one time yeah. so that ebooks um uh, developed and then um even years ago um cyrus i was into audiobooks because i used to have to travel about 45 minutes to an hour to to my job Mm -hmm. And I would put in a, a book and I would just listen to that book, you know, doing the ride going and, and coming. And it was a way that I was able to consume my stories, even though I couldn't just sit down and read. So right. for me, when I first started writing, I wasn't doing ebooks. I was only doing the paperback um, and hardback books, was not doing ebooks. And then, um, of course, Amazon started with the KDP program. And then I was able to upload. Oh, it was crazy back during that time. But when we first start, when it first started with the ebooks, the mm -hmm. upload process was was crazy. But since that time, KDP has really um, ironed out a lot of that stuff, and it takes you like that long. That, mm -hmm. That's how quickly you can upload your book for your for your uh, readers to be able to get to it now. So um, I started out with the paperback and the hardbacks. 
Then I went into um, the e-reader books. I was hesitant, but I did. I wanted to um, get my books into electric form, um, electric format. And then, um, like I said, it took me a little bit longer to get them to the to the audio form, format of it. But it was a it was a process, you know. It, yeah. it was a process and on the author side, especially as a self published author, that that was a big learning curve. You know, to go from setting it up from the paper as a paperback, and then there's a different setup for it now for the ebook format of it, and of course, then there's a different setup for the audiobook um, format of it. So, as a self published author, I kind of had to um, go through all three of those steps with learning curves in place because I had to learn how to upload them and do those different things and make sure they were right. There was yeah. a time where you would um, upload ebooks and then you had to have the chapter links in there, and that was difficult to do. That was the hardest part for me to get mm -hmm. straight. But it was a process, Cyrus. It was mm -hmm. one that I had to learn it from as a reader, um, too, and I had to accept it as a reader. And then I had to learn to do it in the background as a businesswoman with a, with a publishing company. So I had to learn how to. It was it was a learning curve to learn yeah. how to get all of that done, but now we're here. Yeah, we're here, Iris, and we are, you know, what I have had to figure out and learn and to adjust my thinking on is that at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about what's best for the reader and how yeah. the reader and do I want to create barriers for the reader? You know, and so I, I love the fact that what you've been able to do in now, of course, with the audiobooks, we're about to share it with our audience, how they can very easily be able to start enjoying the ones that are already out, knowing there's going to be more to come. So if you guys know Iris, she keeps her website uh, very, very well organized. And she's done that again when it comes to the audiobook. So what all you have to do is go to irisbowling.com slash audiobooks. You all can see it here. And the other great thing is she hasn't created any friction, regardless of how you like to get your audiobooks. Here are all the options for the ones that are already out. You have the Pendleton Rule. You heard her mention that one earlier. You have an, an, an international affair here. You have a risky affair, a family affair, and the different ways you can be able to get them, you can see there. So regardless of what your your preference what is, is. Uh, you're, you're able to be able to get them all in one place, which, Iris, this is brilliant that you've been able to, to do this. And, and I think the other cool thing is it allows people to know also very easily what's available and also keep up with what's coming. So let, let's talk about, if you don't mind, about uh, about the, the series, um, An International Affair, A Risky Affair, A Family Affair. For those who are new to the series, and I think this may be interesting too, Iris, because there may be some people who may see them on these sites who don't know about them. Tell them a little bit about the series. Well, the, the the series, the last year wedding series is what, what it's called. Mm -hmm. And the last year wedding series are actually the weddings of the characters that you've already met in the Gems and Gen series. And these are the couples that haven't gotten married yet. So this is actually their weddings mm -hmm. that you, you get to attend. And what I did was, it's actually four of them. There's another one that's coming. That's the Christmas Affair. And it's already a available. We just don't have it up on the site here yet. But okay. you can get that at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Wherever you get your audio book, you'll be able to get it um, from there. So what it is, is these are four of the youngest, four of the children from the, the, the Gems and Gents series. And you have Luke's wedding, which is the international fair, and you met Luke and Sasha in Earthquake. That was a book called Earthquake. And then in a risky affair, that is Fire Lassiter and LT Palmer's wedding that takes place. Um, it's, it takes place in, in, in Richmond, but some interesting things happen there. <laughs> These are not normal weddings. All <laughs> right. Um, well, yes, that, this is true. <laughs> These are that noble way. Um, they're, they're so loving. And, and then you have a family affair, which is Matthew, who is Matthew Lester, who is our school teacher, and um, Leah. And they get Leah, who is a, um, owns a bus company, a transportation company. And um, it's their wedding. And then in the last one, it is 
Blake Thornton and Jay Lassiter, um, who and it's their wedding. And if you know anything about me, I went through all of those, all three of those wedding stories, and I did not kill anyone. You know, so finally when we got to <laughs> <laughs> Um, somebody had to close their eyes permanently. <laughs> so yeah. I did that. So it's all four, all four of them, but they are all the weddings of stories that were already told. Mm. Love that. Love that. So again, irisbowling.com slash audiobooks is where you guys can find those um, that are already there and be, also be able to look for what's coming. Felicia, hello to you. Hey, Felicia, good to see you. She says, I lo love the covers. Uh, yeah, that yeah, Iris always gives us. I mean, I mean, it's just it's so neat, Iris, and being able to get immersed in your families, right? And I think again, where the people are just discovering them, uh, or have been with them for some time, you know, th there, there's still that feeling of connection there. I want to talk about that latter, that latter point though, because you know, as long as you've been writing these books, as long as you've been telling these stories, introducing these families, what is it like for you when you meet someone who's just discovering them for the first time? You, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, like, once you touch the Heart to Heart series, they're celebrating, like, 15 years. Thank wow. you, Felicia. I love that lipstick, too. Anyway, <laughs> years old, and uh, actually, the event that we just had in Jacksonville, Florida, um, there was one or two readers that was there that just started reading the Heart series. They were wow. really getting into it. And they were so excited. And the thing that I love about them, they feel like JD and Tracy and and um Brian and, and um James James and um I don't know who Douglas, they feel like they're part of their family. And that is what is so wonderful about writing and when the readers really get so engrossed in your characters that they feel like it is a part of their family. You know, they like well, what's happening with James Jr.? You know, what's happening with this one? What's happening with that one? Right. <laughs> okay, they're growing up. The children are growing up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is wonderful when they accept your your characters as part of them. And I, I just can't tell you what that feeling is like when they're all excited. And when they say, Miss Iris, I just finished reading such and such and such, and Joshua was doing this, and this was happening. And I just experienced this in Jacksonville. It's a wonderful feeling, you know, to know that they've accepted your characters with so much love. Love that. Um, Miss Ruff, 1997 on Instagram says, it's an Iris Bowling story, so be prepared for the unexpected. Uh, that is so true, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, that that you, we really never know what's coming. So I have to ask you, speaking of that, that's a great segue, actually. Yeah. So what is coming next? We know you're celebrating the audiobooks and the launch of those and your your readers and now listeners being able to enjoy those. Yeah. What else should we be on the lookout for from Iris Bowling this year? Well, some people are gonna be very, very happy to know the next generation is coming. And so what we have coming next is James Jr. We just I just mentioned him, which is the son of James Brooks. James Brooks is, is the chief of staff to the president of the United States. And his son has now grown up. You met James Jr. in the very first Heart Series book. You know, mm -hmm. so you met him. So they have grown up um, at this point. And now, you know, they're in their 20s. They are making their decisions about their lives. Um, they're falling in love. They're doing all of those things that their fathers did. And then the next generation, you're going to get James Jr.'s story. Um, you're going to get um, Elliot's story. You all met Elliot and the Lost Heart, and that is Brian's son. Mm -hmm. You're going to also get Calvin's story, which you met Calvin in the very first Heart Series book, where Calvin's son, Calvin Jr., is growing up, and he has selected a career, and he's going to be falling in love. And then you have J.C., the president's son, J.D.'s son, J.C., is now all grown up and he is going to be falling in love so those are going to be the first four books in the next generation series so wow. be prepared for some for some exciting things from there and the first one coming is going to be um panther which is james jr's story so be on the lookout for that that's coming soon 
And then don't forget the girls is going to be the second half of the next generation. So you have Jen, oh, wow. you have Samantha, you have um, Jada. So you have some girls that's going to be growing up too. And you're going to have to, you're going to see what they're going to be getting into as well. So those are what's coming up um, next. And then of course, we have the third book in the Nate Rain series coming too. Ah, yes. okay. Yes. Love that. Love that. So you guys, make sure you guys have gotten caught up uh, with the other books in the series as well. Uh, Miss Magnolia Reed says, uh, Iris sets things off even at funerals or weddings in her books <laughs> with one comment or look. <laughs> that, that is, that is so that, true. That is true. I do. And and I like writing different things, Iris, in case um, people haven't noticed. I write romance. I, I, I love romance. That's usually my face. But then I love romantic suspense. I can get into romantic suspense like nothing else because I get to have people fall in love and then I get to kill people too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice combination. Mm, nice combination right. too. So I get to do that. <laughs> well. We have a comment uh, from YouTube. E.L. George says, can only imagine how the second generation heart books will go since their parents were in a class by themselves. <laughs> yes, yes. E.L., appreciate you joining us on the YouTube side. That's the great thing about simulcast is we have people joining us all over. Or we have some people over on X as well. No comments on that side right now. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, Iris, this is such a great conversation. I do want to recap, though, the big news, though, that yep. Iris shared with us here because we want you all to be able to not only to enjoy it yourself, but also to help spread the word. And that is about the the audio books that are now available again all you have to do is go to irisbowling.com slash audiobooks or if you're joining us on the different platforms you should see a link other than on ig a link that will bring you to the website again irisbowling.com slash audiobooks and there you'll see the ones that are available here and those will include the Pendleton rule you see there an international affair a Risky Affair, and A Family Affair. So three of the Lasseter Wedding Series books are here. And as you heard, Iris said, the fourth one also is done too. And then, of course, The Pendleton Rule. You will can get all of these at irisbowling.com slash audiobooks. So while you're on her website looking for other books to read, just click on that audiobooks tab, and you'll be able to get these as well. Iris, such a great thing. I mean, it's so neat for us to be able to watch your your families continue to expand, <laughs> um, but also your empire grow as well. So congratulations to you and, and all that is coming up. I do want to ask you this question, though, for our audience, those who are aspiring authors that I know that you continue to inspire and motivate by your journey, or those who have been in the writing game for a while and maybe they have not had the career they wanted, what advice do you normally know, give to, to writers or aspiring writers out there, Iris? The main thing is be true to yourself. Write what you love to write. Um, there are trends out there, and sometimes trends work for some people, and sometimes they, they don't work for you, and that's okay. Write what you love. Uh, write what inspires you. You know, uh, most most authors, beginning season or whatever, they have authors that inspire them. Yeah. Um, Follow them, follow their journey and, and, and see what they did to make it work for them. For me, it comes down to writing the stories that I love to write and doing them in a way that is true to who I am and true to the way that I want to deliver my stories to the to my readers. So my main thing would be is write what you love, you know, and don't worry about the rest. It will take care of itself. Right, what you love. I love that. I have a comment from IG. Uh, Miss Ruff, uh, Miss Ruff, nineteen ninety seven says, "I love being able to do the videos for Iris Bowling books." And also, we had a comment from Facebook as well. I want to make sure I caught that. From Miss Magnolia Reads, can't wait to get a Christmas affair in audio. That book was spicy and dramatic. Yeah, <laughs> heavy on the dramatic too in that one as well. Miss <laughs> Miss Magnolia Reads for sure. Well, Iris, congratulations to you again since you. Since you uh, scolded me in the beginning of the conversation, I stayed within 32 minutes <laughs> in this conversation, which I think is 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 really good. It is uh, good because we usually go over <laughs> way more than that, so we're getting better at this. 
There you go. See, there you go. With time. Everything's with time, you know. Uh, but irisbowling.com slash audiobooks, everyone. Make sure you guys head over there. If you guys are watching uh, the clips of these conversations, you'll see the website on the screen there. If you're watching them on the different broadcasts, you will see a link that will bring you over to irisbowling.com slash audiobooks. Make sure you guys take advantage of that. However you normally get your audiobooks, you will find the links there. Of course, yeah. for me, it's it's audible, but I mean, for you, where, wherever that is, there's no judgment here. <laughs> you, you have an opportunity to be, <laughs> to be able to get them for yourself. And Iris, my friend, looking forward to our next chat together. I'm looking forward to it too. Can I mention one thing too? Oh, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you listen to my all your books, the one thing that I want you to know is that Winston James is the voice that is behind my audio books. So, oh, well, all except for the Pilgrim to Rule. But uh, the Lassiter um, Wedding Series and Mr. Take Me As I Am, they are all on audio and they are done by the wonderful Winston James. So I just wanted to give a shout out to him. Awesome. Love that. I know he appreciates that as well. And that is the true Iris Bowling way. She's going to make sure that she gives other people their flowers as well. Iris, appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you for tuning in to this episode of Cyrus Web Presents. Make sure you guys are staying connected with Iris. You can find her tagged in the different places that we have our broadcast today. Until next time, you all make it a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.